And I'm at the airport. Another update on the budget, uh, that taxi was 20 bucks. I also spent four bucks on drinks with friends last night. So I'm down to 1450, but all I have to do is fly back. So I think I'm good. The sun is gone. And that's all I really know. No angels in so a quick update, I was supposed to take a flight at 9, but instead I'm taking a flight at 1 because they overbooked the original flight I was on. But uh, because they had to reschedule me, I actually got 150 bucks in Copa flight credits. So I'll take that as a win. Made it to Panama City back on Wi-Fi for the first time in about a week. Not too happy with how many emails I have to respond to. Well, that's that. It's 1 a.m. at O'Hare Airport. I don't need to catch my bus downtown until 7 a.m. I have five or six hours to kill. What can I do in an abandoned airport in the middle of the night? The answer is pretty much nothing. So, uh, I got a different idea. Waiting for some warmth and coming down Felt much older than I really was Waiting for some warmth and coming down all right, so a quick update on the budget situation. I had $14.50 last time I checked in. Since then, I've spent $6.50 on airport food and $5 on the train ride here to downtown Chicago. That leaves me with $3 to spend. So I'm going to spend my last $3 of my $500 budget on breakfast. No. Very, very productive three hours in the Dunkin' Donuts, uh, catching up on a lot of missed work. And I'm gonna take a few morning Chicago sunrise time lapses before I catch my bus back to Manhattan. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Chicago, Chicago, I will show you around. I love it, bet your bottom dollar you lose the blues in Chicago. There she is. Mom, how are you? <laughs> and somehow, some way, I made it back home after a fantastic week in Cuba after only spending $500. Now it's time to see my dogs. Ready, Mom? <laughs> okay, here we go. Bring them out. Vita! 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 Rose! Rose! Ah, you're crazy! I made it back! So before this final vlog ends, I want to share three takeaways. Number one is that immersion really is the best way to learn a language. Even though I was only there for five days, my Spanish really improved, especially with the difficult Cuban accents. Number two is that, yeah, actually the unexpected moments and the difficulties on the trip, the challenges, the obstacles, were actually the best parts of the trip, even though I didn't end up doing what I was planning on doing, because those are the stories I would tell when I would get back. Those would be the things that I would tell friends about. And number three, and perhaps most importantly, yeah, there's a lot of poverty in Cuba, there's a lot of issues, there's a lot of pollution, but there's a lot of things that the U.S. could take away from Cuba. There was so much happiness, so much laughter, so many shouts at friends from the tops of balconies or from the windows of buses. In all, I felt like Cuba had a sense of community that we didn't have here in the United States. So yeah, that was really a fantastic trip. I had a great time. And uh, Cuba is definitely one of the places that I'll remember all my life. Springtime or December Can't find So